Hey guys, it's Chris. Welcome back to Live Life Outdoors. Today's kind of fun. I'm going to be introducing you to a new member of the family. It's not our baby. It's my Kiapa 1911-22. Now, first and foremost, uh, I want you to note the name of the company, even though it's spelled CH, uh, is actually pronounced like a K, so it's Kiapa Firearms. This is their 1911-22, um, so it's a 22 caliber that's meant to look and feel like a 1911-45. Uh, about 2.1 pounds, so it's got some pretty good feel to it. Five inch barrel, um, it's alloy, but there are some steel parts. Um, it's, it's got some good heft to it, I really, really like that. This is used, um, I got it from a, a friend of mine that I work with. Long story short, um, he had a couple of, of things broken on it. Uh, the firing pin was broken, and uh, for some reason the extractor and the pin and the spring are gone. Um, I didn't really pry as, as if he took it out or if it fell out or had problems or, or what have you, but his basically, his attitude was they're inexpensive. If you want to buy it from me, if you want to work out a deal, we'll work it out. Because normally these are like 250 to 275 bucks. So he just basically said it's not worth the hassle to me to fix it. So let's you and I chat. And I said okay. So we made a deal on it. Uh, about the company, Kiapa Firearms. It's family owned, which I think is pretty cool. It was founded in 1958 in Italy, and uh, real good company. Um, you know, and, and for those of you that kind of watch the channel, I, I really like to stay upbeat. Uh, don't like to bash on a lot of things, but uh, as good as the company is, as good as the gun is, one of the frustrations, if you have one and, and need to get some parts for your Kiapa firearm, a lot of them are actually regulated. They, they only ship them to FFLs. And so for me, I needed uh, four parts. I needed a new firing pin, extractor, the extractor pin, and extractor spring. The extractor and firing, um, firing pin are regulated, they're FFLs. And I even asked them, I said, these aren't serialized, these aren't actions, these aren't technically a firearm, they're not receivers. Why do these have to go to an FFL? The only answer I was able to get was, sorry, company policy. So I decided, well, you know, no biggie. It is what it is, minor frustration, I'll get over it. So I went ahead and bought them, all said and done, I think it was like four or five bucks for all of that, and um, had it shipped to the FFL. Went and picked him up, uh, was excited, opened the, the package from him. And I looked in there and I thought, well, where the heck's the firing pin? They said it was in stock, so I called him up. It was on back order. Well, not a big deal. It happens all the time with gun parts, especially certain times of the year, certain election cycles. Sometimes it's kind of hard to find. Uh, after talking to him, they said, yeah, don't worry. We're going to get some soon. Four months later, finally got the parts. So long wait, well, excuse me, I finally got the firing pin. I had the extractor parts. So anyway, I'll get off the uh, gripe horse, basically. I'm, is what it is. I'm excited. I'm going to show you guys uh, a little bit more about the gun, how to disassemble it, field strip it, but also how to replace those parts. Hopefully you enjoy. Okay, so here's the gun. We'll do a quick safety check on it. Now, the magazine, as you can see, is polymer. And uh, it's pretty good quality, actually, really lightweight. But it is polymer and uh, it holds 10 rounds. And so there's no magazine. And of course, there is not one in the chamber. So we're all safety checked. Now, something to note as well the trigger on it is single action. So it's not going to actually pull the hammer back as you pull it, it just goes and does nothing. So you do actually have to cock the hammer back. And then, of course, it will fire. Now something to note on that as well, because this is a 22 caliber, it is rim fire, and you do not want to dry fire it, so you won't be seeing me doing that with it at all. Um, and that actually is why I think the firing pin on this is broken, is that there were some dry fires, and um, I'll show you why a little bit later. Uh, it may not have been intentional, but we'll discuss that a little bit later in the video. Um, nice thing is these Hogue grips are really nice, they're ergonomic, great fitting, they're rubber, and uh, really good looking in my opinion too on the olive drab, the OD green here. Now, a couple other things, of course you got your uh, slide lock and it does come with a, a thumb safety. Now the cool thing about the thumb safety is when it's engaged, it actually does stop the uh, slide from going back as well so you can't even cock it back for the hammer to go back. 
with the slide. You can do it with your finger, but you can't uh, do it with the actual slide, so it locks it into, into place there. There is a safety on this side, and this side is actually kind of an interesting um, safety. You see it's red to red there, so it's good to fire. And it's got these two holes, so it comes with this little tool with prongs that go into those holes. And when you lock that, that is now safe. The hammer is still going to move, however it will not strike the firing pin. Let me show you why. So now I got a good angle on that. When it's on uh, red to red fire, you can see firing pin right here is where the hammer strikes it, completely exposed. However, when I rotate this to the safe, Watch what happens. See, now I'll try to get a little bit better focus on that. Now, it is completely protecting the firing pin. There's a little catch there that goes on either side of the firing pin that actually stands proud of it. So that way, if the hammer were to fall now, it'll hit these two sides and not the actual firing pin. So now it's ready to go. It's going to fire. And now it's safe. So when that's actually put in place, you need the tool to be able to uh, put it back into fire. And so if you're going to be doing it long-term storage or putting it in the safe or worried about kids around or something, that is a really nice feature because that way it will not fire even though the hammer itself is going to move. So for field stripping this, you're going to want to put on the thumb safety because that will lock the slide into place. And you'll notice on the front here, right below the barrel, there is a recoil guide rod plug and you'll depress that and there's a barrel lug you rotate that to three o'clock when you're looking at it and the plug is under spring tension so be aware that that may came may, you know just keep your thumb on it so it doesn't go shooting out and you pull out the, pull out the recoil spring the plug and then once you get that out comes your recoil guide rod at this point, take out the barrel lug, just pull that straight out, and you'll see that there are lugs in the back here, which is what locks it down, so that's how that works. And then you're going to take out your slide lock, take off the thumb safety, cock the hammer back, slide the hammer back, lift up, and pull forward. And that's your field stripping. Now you can see, like I mentioned before, there is a fixed barrel in here and it's five inches. Um, so it's kind of a cool design, very accurate. And one of the reasons, I'll try to zoom in as best I can on this. So now that I got that zoomed in, you can see the chamber here. Um, it is used, as I mentioned before, I got it used so it needs to be cleaned desperately. However, you can see at the top of the chamber, there's a mark right here. And I'm thinking that that's where the firing pin has been striking the chamber there on the dry fires. So that's one indication um, that leads me to believe that this was dry fired and part of the problem. The other one will be the firing pin itself, and I'll show you that. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, we're going to be putting in the extractor, and that's going to go in this empty slot here. Now, for this, we've got a little parts kit that I ordered from Kiapa. And you can see there's the extractor there, the extractor pin, and then the little spring here. So let's get that opened up. Okay, now in the slot where the extractor goes, you can see towards the back, it's actually a little rounded there. That's where your spring's going to go. So they're small parts, so you want to be careful with them. So I just drop the spring. Oh, there I go and drop it. Drop the spring into the slot there. Got it. Your extractor... As you can see, it's hooked right here. That's going to be the part that's actually in and grabs the case to pull it out. So you're going to put that in there. And now also you can see towards the back here, in this area is where the spring actually contacts it and pushes it forward. So you're going to want to line that up with your spring. So this is how it's going to sit. Your pin is actually a roll pin. So, you know, good luck on getting them in. Sometimes they can be tricky, like on ARs and it's going to go in this hole here. Okay, we're just going to get that started there a little bit.
So I'm going to have to multitask. So by pushing that in and back, I need to make sure that that extractor lines up with that hole. So I'm going to kind of keep my finger there. There, it went in. So now we can finish it off with the punch. Got the skinnier punch here to just do the last couple of taps. Make sure that's kind of in there. Okay, so that is in place, and as you can see, there is some movement there, so the spring's working, so that way it can properly uh, pull that out. Okay, so we got that nice uh, and in place. See, there's the movement there, so that's working just fine. And uh, if ever you need to remove it for any reason, when you flip the slide upside down, you can see right here, right there is where you can actually hit that back out. Um, so if ever you need to remove it, you can just pop it through this side and have it come out the top. Okay, so let's move on to the firing pin. Now there's a pin in the slide here that's actually holding it in place. So first we need to get that out. Right. Here's the uh, bench vice. Looks like I'm going to have to do this. Careful of the slide or the uh, sight there. Let's do a few taps. Okay, so as you can see, it's starting to come out there. So let's go ahead and finish it off. So obviously, don't smack it too hard. Okay, so that's step one. Step two is we actually need the firing pin to push forward a little bit. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky. So back here with the hammer strikes firing pin, we're going to push that forward and you can see the firing pin comes out. We need to kind of, as best we can, hold that into place while that's pushed forward with one finger. And with the other finger, we need to push the key to safety out. And by doing that, it'll actually let the firing pin come out the back and release. The key to safety is what's holding that in there. So this is where it gets a little bit tricky. Pop that down. As you can see, the safety fell right out. And then this firing pin is under spring tension, so put your finger back there and release it as slowly as you can. And there it comes right out. There is the firing pin spring. Now that little ball bearing you see there, do not lose that. That is a um, little ball bearing that sits on the keyed safety holding that in there. So and there's a little spring here, so do not lose those small parts. Okay, so I'm holding the firing pin here that we pulled out, and uh, the front piece here is where the actual pin comes in contact with the case, and I'm hoping you can see it, but when I angle it just ever so slightly, and the light hits it, you can see the top part of that pin has a little chip. See the bottom, it's a nice square edge, but at the top, it has that chip. That's what's broken on it. That's what's given a little bit of grief, and I'll try to get another kind of angle to show you see that right there right where that lights coming off there is where the firing pin broke and again I believe that's a result of dry firing it because this top part was hitting the chamber on that mark that I was showing you earlier and um, now it, it might have been intentional dry firing just not knowing you're not supposed to dry fire rim fire uh, or I've also heard these kind of having issues like with um, the, ma the slide not being locked back on the last round of the magazine which would cause the hammer to cock and inadvertent dry firing um, just purely because you think you got another round because the slide's not locked back so when you pull the trigger the firing pin hits the chamber so I don't know if this was intentional like trying to practice or if it was intentional or non-intentional just by the slide lock not locking back so I'm going to do a few tests on it after we get this put together and I can actually shoot it. But yeah, that's where that is broken. And that is exactly why you do not dry fire a rim fire gun. Okay, so as far as the reassembly goes of the firing pin, a um, little bit tricky. So let's go ahead and get started. So firing pin here with this groove up towards the top, towards the sights there. 
and then of course your spring. So put your spring on the firing pin and put it back in the hole there. And the trickiest part about this is you need to get the firing pin pushed in like we did before to take it out, put the keyed safety in, and right there at the very bottom of the keyed safety, that little um, little hole there has a spring in it and that's where that ball bearing goes. Be very careful not to lose that ball bearing. Um, if you have felt or something like that that you can do this on, it would be better so it doesn't roll away if you drop it. Um, but just be cautious of that. It may even take me a couple of tries here to get it done. So, fun with editing. Alright, let's get going. So, you have to push the firing pin in until it protrudes, as you can see there. So, we're going to hold it with our finger like we did during the um, removal. And then we're going to slip that keyed safety. Now remember the red dots line up there at the bottom. Okay. Okay, so we're going to set that in there, let the ball bearing rest as you can see. And then very carefully push down on that ball bearing as we put it into place. Wow, after all that talk about difficulty, it went right in. Well, I'll take my wins when I can get them. Okay, so let's rotate the firing pin so the groove is facing up. As I was holding it, it kind of rotated just a skosh. So let's see if I can get that twisted into place very carefully. In fact, I'm going to get some tweezers to assist. So as you can see, it's protruding, but as you can see, I've got it rotated about 90 degrees. So I'm very carefully, while pushing in, rotating it. And the way to see if we rotated it correctly is through this hole here. If you can see daylight, you know you got it because of that groove at the top when it retracts partially but not all the way and I believe that's it there so now we can take our firing pin retaining pin put that into place there and we'll give it a few gentle taps with the punch and hammer and we should be golden um, if you have a soft metal punch like brass um, I advise that just obviously because you don't want to be uh, marring your gun at all. And we'll just give it a couple of gentle taps. Okay, it's about equal on both sides there. And that is the uh, reinstallation of the firing pin. Okay, so all the parts for reassembly of course. So first step, you're going to want to take your frame with the hammer cocked back and you'll put the barrel through the slide there up top and then you'll have to go all the way back to get the slide on the rails now as you can see here the hammer puts upward pressure on the slide so with one finger just keep the hammer pulled down and uh, just slide that forward once that is in place good idea to get that thumb safety on so that way it kind of locks it um, let you work with it a little bit easier and then you're going to take this slide lock here, and when you put this on, uh, it's going to be facing the rear. And you'll see on the, the uh, slide lock, it's kind of hard to see, there's that hole right here. That's actually where the recoil guide rod sits and kind of acts as a, um, I guess you'd call it a detent, but it basically just holds the slide lock into place, stops it from going anywhere. So this is your next step. You're going to want to put that slide lock in. Once the slide lock's in place, you put your recoil guide rod in, and you're going to want to drop it in there, kind of shake it a little bit so it makes it into the divot in the slide or the uh, slide lock. Put your spring in, and then here is your uh, guide rod retention plug. 
Now, one thing you'll notice as I hold it up closer, let's see if I can get that to focus, there we go. You'll see that there are prongs at the 3 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and 6 o'clock positions. You need the 6 o'clock at the 6 o'clock, obviously, because when you put your barrel lug in, it only fits one way. It can't go any other way in there, so you want to make sure that this smooth groove here is up towards the barrel, so when you put the barrel lug in, it can lock into place, as you can see. So, go ahead and put your plug in there, put that smooth end down, and then get this part in focus for you. So when you put your barrel lug in, remember because of the lugs on the back, you put that in the 3 o'clock position like so. That way it actually locks the barrel in um, once it rotates. So you push that down and then because we had those faced at the 3, 6, and 9 o'clock positions it is now on there correctly. So there you guys have it. Um, the 1911 22 by Kiapa. Um, I'm actually going to consider this part one of two because I still need to fire the gun and I actually want to do some ammo testing because I have some theories on the ammo that's going to cycle and not and, and how the, the firing pin got damaged. So uh, we'll do a part two once I get a chance to shoot it and I'll let you guys know. Um, but I appreciate watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And most importantly, don't forget to live life outdoors.